So in the previous video, we saw that in order to reconstruct our original signal from the sample signal, you need to pass it through a low pass filter. So this is the sample signal, for example. We said that if you sample the signal, the spectrum is going to repeat every fs from minus infinity to infinity. And in order to reconstruct the original signal from the sample signal, you need to pass the sample signal through a low pass filter. This low pass filter, it exists from minus b to b hertz. And in order to cancel the constant, 1 over Ts that appears due to sampling, you need the amplitude of the filter to be exactly Ts. So our filter in the frequency domain, we can write our ideal low pass filter. This is ideal low pass filter with sharp edges. We can write it as Ts rect of f over 2b. So this is how our ideal filter our ideal reconstruction filter looks like it's an ideal low pass filter with amplitude ts and then if we pass our sample signal g bar of t through this filter we are going to get the original signal of course subject to the nyquist condition that the sampling frequency is larger than or equal to 2b this means that the original signal will be convolution between g bar of t and the filter h of t. Of course, if the filter h of f looks like a rect in the frequency domain, in the time domain, it will look like a thing, right? And if you uh, do the Fourier transform, use the duality property, you will find that h of t, you will find that h of t, it is same to be t s same. 2 by dt. So this is how the filter looks like in the time domain. 2 b t s say 2 by dt. And as a special case, as a special case, when we choose Nyquist sampling rate exactly, given that we are using Nyquist sampling rate. which means that fs equals exactly 2b then ts will be equal to 1 over 2b and then 2b ts will be equal to 1 okay so uh, 2b ts will be equal exactly to 1 so the filter can be written as say 2 by dt in this case the filter h of t will be only say 2 by b t and we are going to work on the uh, on the uh, uh, this special case micro sampling exactly micro sampling the sampling frequency is exactly 2 b for uh, to to just deliver the idea that we want to deliver okay so now the original signal is the convolution between the sample signal and the filter and the filter can be written like this so we can say that g of t is a convolution between g bar of t and g bar of t the sample signal we said in the uh, one of the previous videos that it can be written as g of n t s delta t minus n t s from n equals negative infinity to infinity this is our sample signal this is g bar of t and we are going to do a convolution between this signal and the filter, which is say 2 by bt. We know that the convolution between any function and delta, the function takes the shift of the delta. So this will result in summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity. G of nts is the constant. Multiplied by sync will take the shift of the delta. So it's going to give you sync 2 pi b t minus nts. So basically, the original signal, this equation says that the original signal is a summation of sinks, weighted sinks. Weighted means that each sink is multiplied by a certain weight. This weight is the sample value. And at the same time, 
each sink is shifted around its center. So it's a summation of weighted sinks. Each sink is shifted around NTS and multiplied by the value of the function at NTS. What else? Each sink, if we look at each sink here, let's consider one of them. Let's consider sink 2 by BT. This sink, if we want to plot it, we'll find that it goes to zero where it goes to zero when t equals 1 over 2b. So at 1 over 2b or 1 over b or 3 over 2b and same from the other side, negative 1 over 2b will go to 0 again at negative 2 over 2b which is negative 1 over b, negative 3 over 2b and so on, right? 1 over 2b is what? 1 over 2b, this is the sampling period, ts, so it will go to 0 at ts and 2ts and 3ts, it will go to 0 from the other side at minus ts, minus 2ts, minus 3ts, this is the same. And of course when we shift it, it will remain the same shape. So the same function that exists in this equation, it's one here, and then it goes to zero at Ts, which means at the next sample it will go to zero. Next sample it will go to zero and so on. And also in the previous sample it will go to zero. The previous sample it will go to zero. Let's analyze this equation a little bit. This equation says what? This equation says that if you have a signal, if you have a signal, G of t, any signal, something that looks like this, and then you sample this signal. So we're going to take samples at zero. This is sample at zero, sample at ts, sample at two ts, sample at three ts, okay, and then at negative ts, negative two ts. And that's enough. So 0, Ts, 2Ts, these are the samples of our Parisian signal. And the value of this sample is G of 0. The value of this sample is G of Ts, G of 2Ts, G of 3Ts, and so on. So this equation says that if you plot a same function at each sample, so, for example, let's start with that. Let's start with the sample here. If we take a same function, let's start with n equals 0. If we take the same function with n equals 0, it will be same 2 pi d t multiplied by g of 0, which is this value. And the same function will appear like this. This is the first thing. And then, if we take n equals 1, it will give us a, another thing shifted by ts and its value or its amplitude will be g of ts, which is this amplitude. So if we take another uh, sample graph number one, it will give us a same function with this amplitude, and it goes to zero, and the previous samples, and all next samples. And then if we take the next sample, it will give us, in red, the next sample, if we take n equals two, it will give us a same shift by two ts, and its amplitude is g of 2ts, which is this amplitude. This is g of 2ts. This amplitude is g of ts, right? So it's going to give us the same function that looks like this. And if we take here, if we take sample at minus ts, if we take n equals minus 1, it will give you a same shifted at minus ts and its amplitude is g of minus ts, which is this amplitude, g of minus ts. So it's going to give you a same function that looks like this. The equation says what? The equation says that if you add all these same functions, then you are going to get the original signal. If you add all these same functions, same functions shifted, and the amplitude of each of them is weighted by the amplitude of the sample. Same functions shifted, and the amplitude of each of them is weighted by the amplitude of the sample. 
at this location, at this shift. If you add these same functions, they will give you the original signal. So the same function here, what did it do exactly? It interpolated the original signal from the sample values. So from the sample values, from some sample values, from the, some sample values, it interpolated the original signal. So it did the interpolation. That's why the sync function sometimes they call it the interpolation function. Why? Because from some discrete values, it could interpolate and give you the original signal. That's why the same function, they call it, sometimes they call it that interpolation, interpolation function. Why? Because it is used to interpolate the original signal from the discrete samples, from the discrete values of the samples, right? So, again, this equation says that the original signal can be obtained by taking the values of the samples and multiply each value by a same function shifted around the sample. So you take sample number zero, you multiply by the same, shifted around zero. Sample number one, you multiply by the same, shifted at TS, and so on. You add all these things and you get the original signal. So this is just an intuition about the meaning of the equation. So if you multiply each sample by a same, Okay, and then you add all these things, this will give you the original signal. Okay, so that was a good intuition about the reconstruction of the signal. We'll stop here and we'll see you in the next video.